Three days after Kamal Nath, one of the veterans of Indian politics and among the senior most leaders of his party was appointed the General Secretary in charge of Punjab, Mr. Kamal Nath has resigned from that role. In a letter that said that he was hurt by the fact that the 1984 riots were being used by the Aam Aadmi Party and the Akalis to, in a sense, attack him all over again and deflect from what he called real issues of the campaign, Mr. Kamal Nath put in his papers. But the issue does raise wider questions. Has the 1984 shadow returned to haunt the Congress and Mr. Kamal Nath? Who took the decision to begin with to place Mr. Kamal Nath in this role? Who is in charge in the Congress? Again and again, we see different illustrations of how the party is in crisis and might well be imploding, raising serious issues of whether there's a leadership crisis within. Joining us now live on this program is Kamal Nath himself. You've been fronting questions on 1984 now for several years, but you have in your letter where you step aside from this post made the point that it was only almost two decades after the riots that your name was first dragged in. In that case, Kamal Nath, if you believe that you are innocent, if you believe that you had no role in the 1984 riots, why have you left that post? You are somebody who's known to be a fighter. You could have dug your heels in and fought it. Because I think it was an effort to divert the attention, divert the real issues in Punjab, which are misgovernance, the plight of the youth, the plight of the farmers, drugs. And raising these issues, these, this canard, which has not been raised by them for 32 years, even the Akalis have not raised this for 32 years, mm. um, is nothing but a political attempt. I could see the politics in this, and I understand the politics in this, to divert the real issues and focus on something which is a non-issue. Mm. For 32 years, it was a non-issue. I have been General Secretary of the party in 2001. I was General Secretary of the party in Delhi, mm. where nobody raised this issue with so many Sikh voters. We won the MCD elections. And nobody's made a charge at me for there was 84, there was 85, there was 86. Yeah. Nobody even made a statement. Mm. Nobody came on any press, on the media and said that Kamal Nath has anything to do with it. Mm. But in now to raise it is nothing but a political ploy to divert the attention. And I thought that we should not let the attention be diverted. We must focus on the real issues of Punjab and not get into this at all. But you know, if you could see the politics in, in the attack, as you call it, from the other parties, uh, was it poor politics for you to be in this position to begin with? Surely the Congress High Command, as the party likes to call it, saw this coming. Surely you saw it coming. You're a veteran politician. You could have been the General Secretary theoretically in charge of Uttar Pradesh. Why Punjab? I uh, mean, you know, you know politics. Politics is in your blood. You knew what was coming. Punjab is one of the election going states. and. So is UP. So is UP. But there was nobody saw it coming because if it didn't come for 32 years, after the Nanavati Commission report came, there was an adjournment motion moved in Parliament, which carried on for 8 hours and 17 minutes. The Akali leaders, including Mr. Sukhbir Singh Badal himself, spoke on it. All BJP leaders spoke on it, including Mr. L.K. Advani. Nobody pointed a finger at me. They could have pointed a finger at me. They never said that there's any charge against Kamal Nath. There were other people who were charged. The Dhanavati Commission did charge other people. But you know, a finger was pointed by one of your own uh, party colleagues, MS, uh, MS Gill. He's been a, a colleague of yours in the cabinet. Why talk about the BJP and the Akalis? You know what he said? He said this appointment is rubbing salt in the wounds of the 1984 riot victims. Well, Mr. Gill was uh, in the cabinet with me. He never raised it. And my simple question is that for 32 years, you never raised it. You never filed a case. You never filed, made a statement. You never filed an FIR. You did nothing. Now, after 32 years, when the elections are around the corner in Punjab, you start raising it. And when the Nanavati Commission, after 22 years, somebody went to the Nanavati Commission, and what did the Nanavati Commission say? It says so very clearly. It is not possible for the Commission to say that he in any manner instigated the mob or that he was involved in the attack on the Gurdwara. And before that, they say, therefore, it would not be proper to come to the conclusion that Sri Kamal Nath had in any manner instigated the mob. Now you have the Nanavati Commission excerpts before you, so do I. You have long made the argument that the Nanavati Commission exonerated you. But the Nanavati Commission says the following as well, Mr. Kamal Nath. In absence of better evidence, it is not possible for the Commission to say that he had in any manner instigated the mob or that he was involved in the attack on the Gurdwara. But you did not read out the first part. In absence of better evidence. Yes. This could be interpreted as an absence of evidence, as an absence of good investigation, but not as a Clean chit. Since you have the report, what does it say before that? And please read it in entirety. Hmm. What does it say before that? Before that, he says 
Therefore, it would not be proper to come to the conclusion that Sri Kamal Nath in any manner instigated yes, the mob. I have that but then, then he the says, witness was standing far away the from people, the spot. The yes. people, he is saying this in the context of those people who were saying that Muktiar Singh and Ajit Singh were quite far away from the place where Kamal Nath stood. And they could not have heard anything that she, uh, Kamal Nath told the persons in the mob. What she, Muktiar Singh and Ajit Singh have stated about Shikha is by way of inference drawn. That's why he says, because they couldn't give any other evidence. But here's what he also says. The yeah. reply filed by Shri Kamal Nath is vague. He has not clearly stated at what time he went there. He's talking about the Rakavgan Gurdwara and how long he remained there. The situation at the Gurdwara had become very grave at about 11.30 a.m. and continued to remain grave till about 3.30 p.m. The evidence discloses that Shri Kamal Nath was seen in the mob at about 2 p.m. He has not stated whether he went to the Gurdwara alone or with some other persons and how he went there. He has not stated that he looked for the police or tried to contact the policemen who were posted there for ensuring that the situation remained under control. After 22 so years, these are, these are pretty I can't words. give a time. I said approximately, I filed the affidavit that I went there. It's not that it was discovered by that. But he calls, he calls your response vague. It is vague because I could not say because I reached there at 2, 15, 17 seconds. So I did say in my affidavit that I reached approximately at so so and so time is not possible for me after 22 years to give an exact time to the second. So I did. There's other evidence which establishes that I did go there. The crowd did retreat. In fact, what happened was that when I reached there, and why did I reach there? I was told. I was told that there's a mob in uh, around two o'clock. There's a mob in Gurdwara Rikabgarh. I didn't even know where it was, and uh, I, I should go and see what's happening. I went there. Some of the people there recognized me. I told them, what the hell are you doing here? Mm. So they said, oh, this, this thing happening, that's happening. I said, nothing doing, you must go. The police in the meantime told me, and that is on record. The police told me that we are wanting some more forces. Please keep talking to them for a few minutes until our forces come, which I did. And I think I should be applauded for that. And there is evidence. You are to saying you should be applauded for what you did at the Gurdwara Rakab Ganj. Yes. And you are saying you actually stopped because or restrained because crowds I, that were I violent. Restrained them. I restrained them. Some of them recognized me. They clustered around me. I said, do not do anything. I kept talking to them. I said, what's happened? What time did it happen? Because the police had told me we are expecting forces. In about 20 or 30 minutes, the forces arrived and I left. And after that... How no. long were you there? Because the Nanavati Commission says you do not I, give a consistent answer on how long no, you were there. No, there was only one. It was my affidavit. I said, I don't remember. It should have been about 30 to 40 minutes. And until the time the police came. And the police have said so. The police have said so that I was there for so and so time. Nobody said that I was there. In fact, everybody said I was there around 2 o'clock. Now, if it's 2 or 10 past 2, what do you expect me to remember that? Who, who sent you to the Gurdwara? I was Gansh? sitting with some Congress. Were police. you sent by Rajiv Gandhi? No. I, I was sitting somewhere and with some Congress people and somebody got a phone call and they said we must go. I didn't go alone. I went with two other Congress people, somebody from Haryana and somebody from UP. Mm. They were all sitting. But not Vasan Sate. As no, Vasan Sate was not there. The That's also the evidence that I went with Vasan Sate, yeah. which the commission also held to be false. Mm. So I didn't go with Vasan Sate. So what did you go there to do? I went there because I was, we all said that something happening, we must stop this. Mm. So I went to Gurdwara Rikhab Ganj. When I went there, I saw this crowd of three, four hundred people. And I did talk to them. What are you doing here? What is your problem? Why have you assembled here? You must all disperse. That just calmed them down. They, get, they went to start engaging and got into a dialogue with me. Hmm. That helped the police to gain some time to get extra forces. Now, H.S. Pulka, who's now a member of the Ahmadmi Party, but has also been a lawyer for the riot victim, says that if Kamal Nath indeed was actually restraining the crowds from being violent, there were two bodies that were burning out on the street. Why did he not ask the police to intervene there and maybe try and take those victims to the hospital, right? This is a very valid question that I, Gotham Call, as has now been read in multiple testimonies, a senior police officer is standing by doing nothing. You have this control over the crowd. Why do you not use your influence to try and get help to those who have been attacked, whose bodies are out there on the road, or to get the police to intervene? I, I was amidst the crowd, which was far away. I really did not see two bodies burning. In fact... You did not know of them? I did, the not know, I did not know that there were two bodies which were burning. And the police was there. The police, if they saw it, I do not know. And I was not going to give instructions to the police. I am not a police officer. But the police were handling it. They asked me, they only requested me that you must uh, talk to the crowd. It's not that the crowd was in my control also. I you started, are saying that some, I, of, them were I, I did, I some of them were Congress people whom you recognized no, and who recognized no, you. Some of them were Congress people who may have been Congress people who I didn't recognize. The crowd recognized me. Everybody from a crowd is not a Congress person. So from the crowd, they recognized me. And then they started talking to me. Then the others clustered around, started talking to me. And since the police had told me that 
please engage with them. I just carried on titter tatter chats with them. What are you doing? Why are you here? You should not be here. What is the use of being here? This is not what is uh, right. In the meantime, 20 minutes passed, 25 minutes passed. The forces, I saw the forces come. I sat in my car and went away. I never saw any bodies burning. He, let me report to you what Sanjay Sori, who's a journalist who also testified before the commission and written affidavit, but then later writes a book on these riots. And he basically says Kamal Nath and the crowd had a connection, which you are also acknowledging. Anybody who recognizes me will have a connection. But this is in the middle of, it's, it's a kind of murderous mob, right? No, so it's, not a, it's, it's a group of people. It was a crowd there. Some were just spectators. Some were shouting some slogans. Now, I couldn't recognize them. I didn't recognize a single one of them. But they recognized you. Obviously. So, so hear what he not, says. So hear no. what he says. Kamal Nath and the crowd had a connection. He signaled they listened. And they would only like to respond to him if they, the crowd, were from the Congress party and accepted him as their leader, not just any leader. I doubt they would have responded with that alacrity to an MP, say, from the communist parties. So basically, that crowd, he, he is arguing, but he had to says, have been from your party. He also says that Kamal Nath restrained them. Okay? He also says Kamal Nath stopped them. There he says, he stated this before the Nanavati Commission was quoted. Yes. Sri Surya said that Kamal Nath had tried to persuade the mob to disperse and the mob had retreated for some time. That is true. But because I said, why are you doing that? I'm, I'm reading you out what he said before the commission. In, in the affidavit. But in his, in his book, this is the question he addresses. He says, what I did see then was when the crowd surged forward at one point, Kamal Nath only had to gesture lightly and they held back. Does that fact exonerate Kamal Nath? Because on the face of it, he had restrained the crowd, which is what you're saying. But then he goes on to ask, why did the crowd listen to Kamal Nath? Why in a situation where a murderous bunch was advancing, would the police continue to stand to a side and watch the MP control the crowd? Why did a word from the Congress MP become more effective than any move from the police what was the relation between Kamal Nath and that crowd there was no relationship as I said I didn't even recognize anybody the crowd I said what the hell are you doing please stop this I was gesturing to them you stop this don't move from here why are you wanting to go they wanted to get into the Gurdwara and I was standing there right in front of them saying don't get into the Gurdwara the police were waiting for reinforcements and they were asking me they had told me that we want reinforcement please talk so I was engaging I was trying to keep them engaged. Do you have any regrets for how you personally, not just the party, because the party has had to apologize, it is a blot on the Congress's record. Do you personally have any regret for how you could have handled that moment outside Gurdwara Rakam None Gansh? at all. None at all. In fact, I did a human service by talking to the crowd while the police reinforcements arrived, by the police requesting me to do that. And that's it. And I just went away after that. If there was anything more than this. We are talking of 1st November 84. Did anybody say anything in 84? Did anybody say anything in 85? Did anybody say anything in 86? Did anybody say anything in 87? Mm. Until 2005, nobody says a thing. Nobody makes a charge. You had the SIT, you had the Mishra Commission, nobody goes. No one is aggrieved. Who is aggrieved? Mr. Pulka. So if he's aggrieved, why didn't he file a charge? If he's aggrieved... Well, the Amami party is now talking about reopening old cases. We don't know that they may try and file a case but against I'm you saying, based on you know, what they say are the ambiguities in the let, Nanavati Commission's conclusion. Let, let them say what they want. But the end of the day, after 32 years, you are saying this. Is, is there any sanctity in it? Is it not malafide? So let's step back to the bigger picture. You said you put in your papers as General Secretary in charge of Punjab because you did not want the focus to be on this debate. Were you asked by Sonia Gandhi or Rahul Gandhi to resign from this post? No, not at all. I was not asked by Sonia Gandhi or Rahul Gandhi. What, did, what was that turning point for you that in the last 72 thought, hours you decided I, to do this? I thought yesterday morning that they are shifting the focus away from the real issues of Punjab, which is the misgovernance, the plight of the farmers, the plight of the youth and the drug. Uh, so you were not asked to put in your I papers. was not asked. In fact, then until the afternoon I did nothing. In the evening, I started making a letter. Then I talked to Mr. Rahul Gandhi. I said, you know, I want to give this letter. I said, I'll, I want to give a letter. And I explained to him the kind of letter I was writing. He said, well, the Congress president has just come back. I had not even talked to her. She was out of town yesterday. Mm -hmm. So then I said, OK, I will be sending the letter. I sent the letter. I spoke to her on the telephone. I said, I did talk to Amrinder Singh, mm -hmm. and who in the day had held a press conference. To defend you? Yeah. I told him. I said, the whole focus will shift away. And as a congressman. What did he say to you? He said, I don't think there's any need. I said, the focus will shift. He wanted you to stay on? Yeah, he told me that. He, he was on the press. He was defending me. But I, the fact remained that with my experience of politics and electoral politics, the, I could smell the game of the Ahmadmi party and the Akalis that don't talk about the real issues. Start talking about another issue. 
So that issue gets. Did Sonia? Diverted. Did like Amrinder told you that there was no need for you to resign? Did Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi try to dissuade you, or was it a kind of automatic acceptance that they made no, the wrong move? No, they said, that, "Do you think it's necessary? Have you talked to Amrinder?" I said, "Yes, I've talked to Amrinder." They asked me that, "Have you uh, thought about it?" I said, "Yes." I said, "I think in the interest of the party." This is necessary for me. To so you were not asked to put it in. I've never asked. To put, nobody asked me. Now you know, uh, Kamal Nath, I've known you as an outspoken, forthright person who doesn't pull his punches. Uh, some time ago, right after the 2014 defeat, you said to me, "The Congress, the problem with the party is decisions are falling between two stools. There's a Sonia Gandhi stool and there's a Rahul Gandhi stool." It seems to me that two years later, that continues to be the case. We have absolutely no idea who took this decision. Was it Sonia Gandhi? Was it Rahul Gandhi? Was it Prashant Kishore? It certainly doesn't seem to have been Amrinder Singh because one of the points he's made again and again, Captain Amrinder Singh, is that regional leaders are not treated well in this party. So on the larger issue, do you believe that that leadership crisis that you flagged two years ago continues to be an issue in the party? Well, I think uh, uh, Mr. Rahul Gandhi, what he was two years ago and what he is today, we must remember hmm. that it's only in the last one year that Ra Mr. Rahul Gandhi is now fully engaged with the Congress party's politics. Yes. It's only in the last one year. Hmm. Let's recognize that fact. But who is the leader of the party? The leader of the party is definitely Mrs. Sonia Gandhi. And I do not believe that Mr. Rahul Gandhi takes decisions without consulting uh, Mrs. Sonia Gandhi. So Sonia Gandhi, at the moment, continues to be the leader of the party. She is the president of the party. It, everything moves on her signature. But has de facto Rahul Gandhi appropriated that role? No, he's not appropriated it. I think to the extent she's delegated it to him. She's delegated much to him which he then consults her. Who would own the decision to make Kamal Nath General Secretary in charge of Punjab? I which one of these people? Who called you? Well, Mrs. Gandhi called me. Herself? Yeah. So that decision would have to be owned by her then? Well, she's the one who informed me. It was not a discussion. I was informed. So, so let, me, let me read to you what Captain Amrinder Singh said recently. He said the high command of the party has to get off its high horse and learn to respect regional satraps. He said this in an interview to NDTV. And he spoke about how the Congress should have understood Himanta Biswa's value better, Jagan Reddy's value better in Andhra Pradesh. Do you, and you've seen what's happened in Haryana. It's a kind of almost open rebellion. It's not rebellion. It is Haryana. rebellion by Bupendra Duda. I, I, I have talked to the leaders of Haryana in the last two days. It's certainly not rebellion. So what was it? It is a conspiracy. It is an absolute conspiracy. I understand these elections. And it was that one MLA goes of the BJP, changes the pen. The rules are you can only do it with the pen and the color of the ink placed by the election commission. Mm. There is a booth. You go there, he picks up that pen, puts another pen. Unwittingly, other people who follow him use that same pen. They don't go and vote every day. They are not familiar with all this. Hmm. They go see a pen there. Bhupendra Huda came at 2 p.m. to vote instead of 12 p.m. So there are many question but marks. He did not want to vote on the side of the INLD. But my question is a little no, different. No, no. no. So let us finish is, this. Let us yeah. The conspiracy you are saying. Yes. There is no revolt. There is no conspiracy in Haryana. So 12 MLAs or 13 or whatever it was went and used the pen which was not the certified pen. The, uh, then somebody went and changed the pen. Then they sent another one of their people who changed the pen and put the right pen. Three people voted after that. It's, it's valid. So, and but there's an inquiry being on conducted. On my larger issue, that regional leaders are, you know, Amarinder Singh, you know, you were going to be General Secretary of Punjab, had this controversy not erupted. He's saying you've not even named me chief ministerial candidate. I mean, look what's going on. He almost walked out of the Congress party. It is on that threat that he was made in charge of the campaign, else he was going to leave because Rahul Gandhi or the high command did not want to project him as chief ministerial candidate. We still don't see his name announced. My question is a larger political one, Kamal. Is the problem in the party that the high command is not giving autonomy to regional leaders? I don't think so. You see, we must remember that politics has also changed. The Congress party and Mrs. Sonia Gandhi realizes that. And I can say this firsthand because she's told me many times that the politics has changed and we must change. She's the one telling me that, which I know is, is correct because I can see that myself. Yes. So there is a process of doing it. Now, if Amrinder Singh hasn't been named chief minister, he is saying that there's time is, there was time enough in the last three months. But don't you think he should be? Well, it's, it's up to Mrs. Gandhi. And I think they've already had a discussion on this mm. about the timing of it. You also don't want to name a chief ministerial candidate much, much, much before mm. uh, the elections. There's a timing to all these things. Mm. And Himanta Biswa walks out. He tells Rahul Gandhi, you're going to lose 55 MLAs. Do not want Tarun Gogoi to be chief minister. Himanta says famously, I, I, Rahul was I, playing I, with his I, dog. I, when I, I don't think those numbers were correct. I, I, I know Himanta. He's a competent fellow. And uh, he's been a strong party man. I, I, I know him very well. But for him to come and say, either you remove the chief minister or I'm going, what would you do? 
So why don't you identify for me what you think is wrong with your party? And I'm asking you this because I take you back to what you yourself said. You said the crisis is we are falling between I, two I stools. Party members do not know who's our boss. Is it Sonia? Is no, it Rahul? No, no. I think everybody knows who's the boss. Who is and the boss? The boss is Mrs. Sonia Gandhi and she has asked Rahul. She, Rahul is the vice president. So she can't meet hundreds of people every day. But is this going to shift? Is I, this going to I, shift? I, I hope. I hope in the near future, Mr. Rahul Gandhi will do take Do you over. think there should be a timeline to it? You have two critical elections coming up, Punjab and UP. Do you believe Rahul Gandhi needs to step up to the mantle or step up to the plate by then? Because yes, otherwise... Yes, I think he needs to. I think he needs to become Congress president the faster the better. Before 2017? I think now, in the next couple of months. Now, will that really make things better? Because there is a number of senior experienced leaders who actually do not agree with Rahul Gandhi's decision making. And in many ways, Gulam Nabi Azad and your appointment was seen to be an illustration that it's Sonia's team that's back and Rahul's team didn't work. It's a different matter that you and Punjab, in my opinion, was a bad idea. But you are recognized to be one of the most experienced politicians. They certainly can use you in any other state, including your own of Madhya Pradesh. Is this Sonia's team back in, in back in uh, a, uh, at the helm? I don't think there's a difference between Sonia's team and Rahul Gandhi's you team. You yourself said we're falling between two stools. I said it at that time. Now, is it not true now? No, it's not true now. I must tell you this, that Rahul Gandhi and me and Gulam Nabi and other senior leaders engage on a very regular basis. I engage much more with Rahul Gandhi than with Mrs. Sonia Gandhi. Yet you're saying she's the boss. She is the boss. She is the president of the party. What ails the Congress? You are at your lowest ever level, both in Parliament and even in terms of the number of MLAs. The BJP is at its historically highest level of the number of MLAs. If you want to accept my argument that regional bosses are not treated well and not given autonomy, you define for me what would you define as the Congress crisis right now? Well, I think the Congress crisis this had to come because this is a prelude. This is after this thing of 2014. But if we have a look at the states to to the elections, and this is statistical. I'm giving this statistics from the NDTV figures itself. Mm -hmm. That the Congress gained in every state. BJP in four states got four seats. Compared to 2014, they went down in SM, they, in the number of MLAs and in the percentage vote. In West Bengal, they went down. Even in uh, Pondicherry, they went down. In Tamil Nadu, they went down. The Congress went up. These are figures which are NDTV figures, not mine. But you so, know what so I'm saying. In the sense, I mean, you're down so, to 45 so, so MPs. From this, your MLAs from are the lowest they've ever been from nationally. From an election in the last one and a half months, the Congress in number of seats in the assembly segments which were held, uh, the elections which were held now yeah. and compared to the assembly segments yeah. in 2014, the BJP has gone down, the Congress has gone up. So you're saying there's no crisis? There, there is always something to be done. Something I'm, to but be it's done not a question of a crisis in the manner you're making it out. Is there not a leadership crisis? I don't think there's a leadership crisis. The fact, what do you see is Mr. Prashant Kishore's role? Because there are also reports that many senior leaders have misgivings that someone has come from the outside and is now taking critical I decisions. I think you need somebody from the outside. I think you need a strategist because we are so involved 24-7 in politics, we may miss out certain points. So you require somebody externally to be giving, doing something. But some then he comes in and he's not given authority, which is a classic no, Congress he thing. He does out-of-the-box thinking. He makes, he thinks what, he engages with the people, he thinks what perception-wise is going to work. We sitting in the party all the time may miss those points. So I think it's always better to have a strategist. In every democracy in the world, in every election in the world, they have outside strategists. But then the party is to give him that authority and space. You don't and need authority. Had run -ins with you don't, you don't have authority to make a, you don't need authority. He's not deciding candidates. He's not deciding posts and positions. That's not his role. And he knows that's not a role and he doesn't even do that. All right, last question, coming back to, you know, your letter. The BJP gave a statement today saying the fact that Kamal Nath has actually put in his papers as General Secretary Punjab means, indicates a kind of guilt. Because if he wasn't guilty, he would have stayed in and fought the fight. I have clarified in my letter that I don't want this. This, the BJP is now wondering that now they'll have to talk something else. Up till now, the BJP in Parliament, otherwise, for 32 years, did they say a thing? They never made any single charge. And now they are saying this because they feel that, that what they were attempting to do along with the Akalis to divert the attention is not going to work. Who do you think should be the chief ministerial candidate in Punjab and who do you think should be the same candidate in UP? Well, I don't know about UP, but in Punjab, certainly I think it's, it's, it's a foregone conclusion. It has to be Amrinder Singh. And you would like to see Priyanka Gandhi Vadra jump into this election as well? Well, I'd like to see Priyanka campaigning at least for the Congress party, adding her weight to the Congress party. There's nothing, no harm in that. Kamal Nath, a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much.